now that we've looked at filtering collection objects and browsing them in TaxonWorks, let's look at how to get a specimen or a collection object from point A to point B, basically from completely undigitized to digitized. So this is mainly accomplished through the comprehensive specimen digitization task in TaxonWorks. I have it already here on my favorites bar. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. So we'll do this in multiple parts. This is a really complicated form and would take a long time to go through all on itself. So I'm gonna break it up into the digestible chunks. So first off, we'll look at the, the fields that are just associated with the collection object itself. These are the main few things you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be adding. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to add a catalog number. And in TaxonWorks, you always need to associate a namespace with any of your catalog numbers. For many museums, this is going to be whatever the namespace is for your museum. Basically, what, uh, in what hypothetical area is that number unique? So for example, in the INHS insect collection, we have a number of different namespaces, um, everything from INHS Odonata, like so, to INHS Insect Collection. And this is a bit of a legacy uh, holdover from when we were digitizing each of our different sub order or different orders in the collection and with their own unique identifiers. We've now since switched to just INHS Insect Collection and all of our numbers are unique within this new namespace. So for this uh, specimen I'm going to be adding here, uh, let's go ahead and select that one, INHS Insect Collection. And then I'll give that a unique identifier, which would correspond to the catalog number on my specimen. Now, I'll note that if I were to uh, give this uh, an earlier identifier, uh, you'll see that this one has already been exists and it won't be saved. So you do need to make sure this identifier is unique and TaxonWorks enforces that uniqueness within your specific database within your namespace. Your repository is where the specimen is actually deposited. So let's go ahead and add INHS. Your preparation is how it's prepared. So we'll say that this is a pin specimen. And let's go ahead and save it right now. And you can do that with um, different keyboard shortcuts visible here and under help click on keyboard shortcuts, you can see, oh, I wanna save, I'm on a Mac, so it's gonna be control S. So I can do that, hit control S, or I can go up here and hit the save button. And one of the cool things about TaxonWorks is that it gives you a little bit of a progress bar in terms of this little hexagon. This is kind of going after the, uh, the concept of how digitized or how complete is the specimen. So right now I've assigned a really important thing, I've assigned a catalog number, I've assigned an identifier. So that's represented by this little yellow slice of this hexagon. And there are other sections that need to be assigned for this to be completely filled out. Additionally, you have these soft validation warnings on the right telling you uh, what you need to do to get your specimen completely digitized. You need to give it a determination, you need to give it a collecting event, you need to give it biocurations. So before I get to any of those, let's talk about buffered fields. So this, these buffered fields represent all of the data that's on my labels completely transcribed as closely as possible to what is originally on the label. Now I've gone ahead and just prepared some of that on my clipboard here. And I'm gonna just paste that in, but this represents what is verbatim on the label uh, on my specimen. And in TaxonWorks, this is broken down into three fields, anything associated with the determination, anything associated with the collecting event, and anything else. We find that these are relatively easy to teach um, and are relatively easy to conceptualize. So it's easy enough to break these three down. So here is my uh, who, what, when, who, when, where, why uh, label, my collecting event. Here is my determination label put that right there. And then here is my other labels, things that are not associated with the collecting event. So now let's go ahead and save again. 
And you'll see I filled out two more of these pie pieces. So I have my buffer determination on there and I have my buffered collecting event now on here. So let's just take a quick break and go back to browse task and just show what this looks like now. So if I go back here to the browse collection object task, you can see I don't have any uh, determinations on there yet other than the buffered ones. I don't have any collecting event assigned other than the, the, the text in the collecting buffered collecting event field, et cetera. So this is still a pretty primitive record in terms of what information is there. However, it does have all of the information associated with that specimen in terms of the text associated with it. So this is what we would call a stub record or a uh, mids level one or zero. I'm not sure which one, but um, a really low level type of specimen in terms of how much information is associated with it. But let's go back to our comprehensive. There's one last thing I'd like to add before we get, or two more things I'd like to add before we call this uh, a little bit more of a complete stub record. First off, you can add cool things like depictions, um, citations and attrib attribute, attributes here, custom attributes here, um, but we're going to ignore those for now. So let's look at um, the bio curations. So in, in TaxonWorks, you can create your own bio curations, and these will typically uh, uh, look like controlled vocabularies for how specimens are typically classified or uh, uh, except not in terms of determination. So uh, biologically relevant details that might be added to a specimen. So this can be anything, um, but for most purposes, uh, you might have these kind of fields, something like sex, which is male, female, intersex, gynandromorph. Um, you might have life stage, adult, pupa, immature, exuvia, and you can customize and add URIs to these and things like that. So on this specimen, if you look at the determination, this is a male. And there's one of them. So I'm going to make sure there's one and then male. And we'll just say that it's an adult as well. So I can save that. And you'll see that soft validation of bio curations going away is gone. All right. So now I have a specimen that has a stub label data. It's got a catalog number, a repository, and preparation. I'm going to add one last thing. I'm going to do a little bit of parsing before I move away from this record you'll see that there's no determination on here. There's no, nothing saying this is Bactrinium fbgerum identified by me in 2021. That happens down here in determinations. So let's look for that taxon name. And if you'd like to figure out how to get names into your database, um, I'll recommend the other TaxonWorks videos on adding new taxon names. You can see here, I've got two options for Bactrinium fbgerum, or for Bactridium. So we'll select Bactridium fbgerum. Then I can search the database for a specific person who determined this, in this case, me. Uh, you can see there's a couple different McElraths um, that probably need Uniqified, but this is the most commonly used one. It's the most recent and it has the most roles and it's in my project. So I'm gonna select that one. And then I'll put in the year from my buffered field, which is 2021, and then add this right here. So you'll see it comes on here. Yep, there's nothing really showing up here yet. Now, if I save this, you can see that this converts to a little edit button with an annotator and a delete. So this is actually on here now, even though it's not showing up here uh, yet at the top. But if I refresh and just refresh that cache data, you can see that this stub record is now complete. And if we go back to this right here, uh, this browse collection object view, you can see that there's now a tax on determination and biocuration classifications on there. You can start to see some of these fields in our Darwin core representation start to fill out. Catalog number, preparation, identified by, data identified, uh, and other cool things like that. Next, we'll look at uh, some of the harder uh, to parse parts of uh, digitization, but that'll be for in our next video.